My name is Detective Michael Harris, and I was once a rookie cop with big dreams and a naive belief that I could handle anything the job threw at me. It was a chilly Friday night in October 2005 when I found myself alone in the darkness, patrolling the desolate streets of a small, forgotten town. As I drove through the empty streets, the only sounds were the faint crackle of the radio and the eerie whistle of the wind. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, but I chalked it up to nerves. After all, it was my first solo patrol, and I was determined to prove myself. But then, the call came in. Dispatch crackled to life with reports of a disturbance at an abandoned farmhouse on the outskirts of town. My heart pounded in my chest as I made my way towards the old, decrepit building. My body cam recorded every step, capturing the anticipation and dread that churned in my gut. The farmhouse loomed before me like a shadowy sentinel, its windows shattered and its doors hanging off their hinges. I hesitated for a moment, my hand hovering over the door handle, before stealing myself and stepping inside. The air was thick with dust and decay, and the floorboards creaked beneath my boots. My flashlight cut through the darkness, casting long, twisted shadows on the walls. I could feel the weight of the night pressing down on me, suffocating me with its silence. And then I heard it. A low, guttural growl echoed through the house, sending shivers down my spine. I froze in place, my heart hammering in my chest as I strained to listen. But there was nothing. No movement, no sound, just the oppressive stillness of the night. I swallowed hard, my mouth suddenly dry, and forced myself to continue forward. Every step felt like an eternity, each creak of the floorboards echoing in my ears like a death knell. I knew I should turn back, call for backup, but something compelled me to press on, and that's when I saw it. A flicker of movement in the darkness, a shadowy figure lurking in the corner of the room. My blood ran cold as I trained my flashlight on the spot, but there was nothing there, just an empty space, mocking me with its emptiness. I blinked, my mind struggling to make sense of what I had seen, when suddenly, the figure reappeared, closer this time, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest, as the figure advanced towards me. I fumbled for my gun, my hands shaking with fear, but it was too late. The figure was upon me, its icy fingers wrapping around my throat, choking the life out of me. And then, everything went black. When I regained consciousness, I found myself lying on the cold, damp floor of the farmhouse, my body cam still recording despite the darkness that surrounded me. My head throbbed with pain, and every breath felt like shards of glass in my lungs. I pushed myself to my feet, my limbs trembling with exhaustion, and stumbled towards the door. But as I reached for the handle, a voice echoed through the darkness, freezing me in place. Leave, it whispered, its words dripping with malice. I spun around, my heart racing in my chest, but the room was empty. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as I searched for the source of the voice, but it was as if it had vanished into thin air. With a shudder, I forced myself to focus, my training kicking in as I scanned the room for any sign of danger. But all I found were the same twisted shadows and decaying walls that surrounded me, mocking me with their emptiness. I took a deep breath, stealing myself for whatever lay ahead, and stepped back into the darkness. The farmhouse seemed to stretch on forever, its labyrinthine halls twisting and turning, like a nightmare come to life. Every step I took felt like a leap into the unknown, each creak of the floorboard sending chills down my spine. But I couldn't turn back now, I had to find out what was happening here, what had brought me to this forsaken place in the dead of night. As I pressed on, my body cam captured every moment of my descent into madness, the flickering light casting eerie shadows on the walls. I could feel the weight of the darkness pressing down on me, suffocating me with its silence. And then I heard it again, a soft whisper, barely audible above the sound of my own heartbeat, beckoning me further into the depths of the farmhouse. I hesitated for a moment, my instincts screaming at me to turn back, but something compelled me to continue forward. With each step, the whispers grew louder, their words twisting and distorting, until they were nothing but a cacophony of madness. I could feel the tendrils of fear wrapping around my mind, threatening to drag me into the abyss. 
but I refused to give in. I had come too far to turn back now. I stumbled into a large, cavernous room, my breath catching in my throat at the sight that greeted me. Strange symbols covered the walls, drawn in what appeared to be blood, their twisted shapes pulsing with an otherworldly energy. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as I approached, my body cam capturing every moment of my growing unease. But as I reached out to touch the symbols, a voice echoed through the darkness, freezing me in place. Leave this place, it whispered, its words dripping with menace. I spun around, my heart pounding in my chest, but the room was empty. I could feel the weight of the darkness pressing down on me, suffocating me with its silence. But I refused to give in to fear. I had to find out what was happening here, what had brought me to this forsaken place in the dead of night. With a trembling hand, I reached for my gun, my fingers closing around the cold steel. I could feel the weight of it in my hand, the promise of protection against whatever horrors lurked in the darkness. But as I turned back towards the symbols, I realized that I was not alone. As I stood there, my gun clutched tightly in my hand, I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. A shadowy figure emerged from the darkness, its form shifting and twisting like smoke in the wind. I froze, my blood turning to ice in my veins as I watched the figure draw closer, its eyes burning with a malevolent light. I could feel the darkness closing in around me, suffocating me with its oppressive weight. With a trembling hand, I raised my gun, my heart pounding in my chest as I prepared to defend myself. But before I could pull the trigger, the figure vanished into thin air, leaving me alone in the darkness. I stood there for what felt like an eternity, my mind reeling with fear and confusion. But as I glanced around the room, I knew that I had to get out of there, to escape the horrors that lurked in the shadows. With a newfound sense of determination, I turned and fled into the darkness, my body cam recording every panicked step. I stumbled out of the farmhouse, my heart pounding in my chest as I gasped for breath. The cold night air burned in my lungs, but I dared not stop, not until I was far away from that accursed place. As I made my way back to my patrol car, I could feel the weight of what I had seen pressing down on me, threatening to consume me with its darkness, but I refused to let it break me, refused to let it rob me of my sanity. I reached the safety of my car and collapsed into the driver's seat, my hands shaking as I fumbled for the radio. I needed to call for backup to tell them what had happened, but as I raised the radio to my lips, I hesitated. Would they believe me? Would they think I had lost my mind? But then I remembered the footage on my body cam, the undeniable proof of the horrors that lurked in the darkness. With a newfound sense of purpose, I called for backup and waited for them to arrive. As dawn broke over the horizon, I watched as a team of officers descended upon the farmhouse, their guns drawn and their faces grim. I knew that they would find nothing, that the darkness would swallow up all evidence of what had transpired there. But as I watched them disappear into the darkness, I knew that I would never forget the horrors that I had witnessed, that they would haunt me until the end of my days. And as I drove away from that accursed place, I vowed that I would never again let the darkness consume me. As I sit here now, recounting the horrors that I witnessed on that fateful night, I can't help but feel a chill creeping up my spine. The memories of that farmhouse, of the darkness that lurked within its walls, will haunt me until the end of my days. But I am not alone in my terror. There are others out there, others who have encountered the darkness and live to tell the tale. And it is for them that I share my story, a warning to all who dare to tread where the shadows dwell. Beware the darkness, for it is not simply the absence of light, but a living, breathing entity, hungry for the souls of those who dare to challenge it. Trust your instincts, for they may be the only thing standing between you and the horrors that lurk in the shadows. And remember, dear viewers, that the darkness is always watching, always waiting for its next victim. So heed my warning and tread carefully, for you never know what horrors may await you in the depths of the unknown.